Hey, Lucy. Yeah. Hello there. Hello there, General Kenobi. Every choice made has led to this. Long time. Hey everyone, welcome to our first ever interview-tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And I'm Lucy. Lucy? Burr, wow! Burr, burr, oh, I forgot burr. to push that button in her. Come burr, burr. on! Um, you had one job. But yes, <laughs> I had one job. But yes, we have Lucy on the show tonight. Yeah, everyone sure. has heard her voicemails, everyone loves her, and we figured for our first ever interview we could have a super fan and we chose to go with lucy thank so you how does it feel to be on the show lucy it feels <laughs> great like you guys have a great fan base great community and i just can't wait to interact even more with you guys than normal in the 60 seconds of my voicemails right yep true it's hard, it's hard to have a conversation with you it when is. it's like i literally have to edit my script <laughs> every week i have to like cut out entire paragraphs because they don't fit in a minute <laughs> right yeah I, re I still remember when we first got lucy's first voicemail and jeremiah's like i'm pretty sure this person had a script and we right. were like amazed it and showed. we listened to it <laughs> i think multiple times before we even went live because even right. andrew was like yeah that's a legit script because we and it was funny because we were kind of like how old is this person because it's like yeah high pitched voice but like super like college level writing skills for her first yeah. voicemail i'm like that so. seems about right but yeah. yeah so well we're happy to have you on the show and so, so is the biggest chat i'm pretty sure we've ever had there's oh, like really? something people in here right now 27 people so <laughs> so, that's cool. so yeah, hi, i everyone. guess our show our show is already better because lucy's apparently uh, <laughs> um but yeah lucy so uh, we know an, uh, some about you from uh, the voicemails that you send in, but also from your own podcast that you started, we've learned some stuff about you. But for those of you who haven't maybe heard those things, can you give us a little information about yourself, a little bio, just so people can get caught up a little bit? Yeah. So um, my name is Lucy, obviously. I have been into Star Wars for most of my life. Uh I'm a big fan of podcasts, of writing, creative writing. You know, if you've heard my fan fiction, you know that. Uh, Star Wars super fan, reading super fan. Uh, really love the arts. And I did start my own podcast. So if you want, you can go over to For Light and Life on several different platforms. And hopefully you can get to know Do each other it. a little better. <laughs> Yeah, and Jeremiah will put that in the description as well. Yeah, we'll have that so, on when we post this too. So, so um, if you're listening to this or whatever, go click that link to that Spotify link and go give Lucy a five star rating. And yeah, go listen to it. Thanks. There, it's I love the podcast. I listen to it every week. I haven't listened to this current week, but I'm excited to go to work tomorrow so I can listen to it. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So what we're gonna be doing with interviews. So this is not the only interview we have planned, but um, we want to interview people on their perception and their views of Star Wars. And so usually what we're going to do for people is going to be, what is your Star Wars story? That was one of our first episodes that we did kind of explaining, you know, how we became big Star Wars fans. And so anyone on the show is going to have that same question. And then depending on, you know, if they have their own podcast or their own like special whatever we'll interview them about their flavor of media that they're a part of whether it's flavor. instagram or whatever um but we know that people love ranking episodes that we post and so uh we don't have time to do top fives for everything but we figured 
to do rankings, we could do top twos of everything. So uh, I went back and I looked at a lot of our top five ranking things and I picked uh, a bunch of them. And so our interviewees will give their top twos on things. And so um, there's a wide range of things. And then classic Star Wars, you have to rank all the movies at the end because everyone loves those rankings. Um, so that's the format we'll have for tonight as well as future interviews that we will be doing as well. So Lucy, what is your Star Wars story? What does Star Wars mean to you? Well, my dad introduced the movies to me when I was around six years old and I Good was, guy. <laughs> Good guy. yeah, he's the best, but I <laughs> was semi into it. You know, I was pretty young, so I wasn't like super fan yet. But all that changed when I discovered Ahsoka's character about a year later, I think, when looking at my brother Henry's sticker book. And so at the time, I still hadn't watched Clone Wars or anything, but I played Star Wars with my dear, dear friend Emily. And I just played as Ahsoka from the little tiny description in the sticker book. And I did eventually see Clone Wars, thankfully, because it's an amazing show. And after that, I really liked all the Clone Wars era characters. So I started writing Star Wars fan fiction plays starting when I was like seven or eight years old. And I would perform them with some friends every year for a few years. And that was just a blast. And You made your dad <laughs> proud, I'm pretty sure. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but then I upped it to the next level and I started writing fan fiction books. I say in quotations because they're, like, they're only 40 <laughs> pages long and like size 26 fonts. But... I wrote 13 plus in under a year, I would say, of those mini books. And then I found Empire Radio in June of 2020, and I was hooked right off the bat. I was very, very new to podcasts at the time, but I thought, these guys, they have so much to say about Star Wars. They say it well. It's just really interesting to listen to them. And it was Colin Wars Save yes, podcast, it was, right? Because so that's that's why I played our intro. I know music that, that was podcast, great music, cause... by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was all Andrew playing. Shout his, out to uh, Andrew. Cover. He doesn't listen, but yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Andrew. <laughs> but um, I, then during the depths of COVID, I started the first Star Wars Society Club um, virtually, and I did have like a couple people who stuck around every meeting. And so that was great. I got to form a new community based off of something we all liked. And I think it was probably a really important part of me getting to where I am today. And then after listening to their Wives of the Empire episode, I thought, <laughs> okay, I like need to somehow be involved with this podcast. They've got such a great community over there. And I was just so excited for days and days. Like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to send in the voicemail. And then... I sent in my first voicemail and was played on February 23rd, 2021, which is such a long, a long time, time ago, ago, yet not very <laughs> far away, but... Right. And then we started, some Empire Radio fans, we started the VCU, the Voicemail Cinematic Universe, which was yep. huge. I mean, it was so much fun. And then probably part of that, getting to create something with other fans and just sort of be out there is probably partly what pushed me to start my podcast 16 months later called for light and life. Um, right now I'm still writing fan fiction, both books, which are now thankfully up to more of a 120 plus pages and shorter stories, which you can see some of on my podcast. I still have my star Wars club during school, still talk about star Wars, with my friend, Emily, and I'm still here doing what I love talking about star Wars. Awesome. Awesome. So, Drew, what is our first ranking that we're going to have Lucy talk about tonight? What is your top two ships? Well, I didn't put quite as much thought into this one as I did some of the other ones, because I just don't right. think about ships that often. But these right. are a couple that I think are pretty cool. In second place, we have the Ghost. It's just really cool design-wise with the Phantom and all the various features. It definitely has like a very home like feel it just makes you feel mm -hmm. like the crew just so so much of a family and it's just really nice to watch you feel all the connections both 
that it has with the crew members and what the crew members have with each other. Just so many stories happen on board it. And the, the ghost has certainly saved the crew several times. And so it's just a great ship. And in first place, we have the Tribunal, which is the big Republic Star Destroyer that, spoiler alert, crashes and kills a whole bunch of clones at the end of Clone Wars. And there's just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is just the beginning. <laughs> uh, it has such a big <laughs> emotional significance. I associate it with the Clone Wars finale and all of the heart-wrenching scenes that take place inside of it. And it's also the final place that Ahsoka is leading the clones and being around them before they get brainwashed by Order 66. And that's a whole other tragedy. <laughs> but also, I mean, Star Destroyers look really cool inside and have so many great features. So that is my favorite ships. Awesome. Awesome. I was a, that your number one came out of nowhere. I was like thinking like yeah, X-Wing. I didn't like, what ship is Anakin's that? Anakin's ship, maybe. I'm like, I didn't even know what that was until you explained what it was. <laughs> so. All right. So those are your top two ships. So next one. What are your top two lightsabers? Well, in second place, this will not come as a surprise to anybody, but they're Ahsoka's white lightsabers. I love the personalized design. You know, they're rectangular and have the diamond pattern that she has a lot. Uh, the story of how she built them is really cool, how she's collected all these different parts and took the lightsaber, the kyber crystal, sorry. You can read that in the Ahsoka novel. Um, and how the crystals like got purified after she took them from the Inquisitor. Just great significance and story. And then in first place, we have the Darksaber, which... Oh! <laughs> I like that answer. Yeah. I like mean, opposite, the white lightsabers yep. to the... the That's black. true. So that's I cool. didn't think about the visual aspect, but... Yin and yang. That, true, I mean, come on. yeah. Um, as you know, it's like the only Mandalorian saber, the concept of it is really cool. How Tar Vizla, I think was his name, like first built it when he came into the order mm -hmm. uh it's got a ton of like history and culture also has like a very powerful and intimidating design and just there's so many different interesting aspects like how it gets heavy when you're like trying to fight it as we see in the mandalorian so just a really cool saber yeah awesome awesome drew what's the next topic tonight your top two droids Ooh. Okay, um, I couldn't really decide which one of these I liked better, so it's just a tie for my top two. But the first one is K2SO, which I believe is Jeremiah's favorite droid, right? Oh. Uh, it's someone's favorite droid. No, I, th I don't remember. I thought it was, <laughs> was it Drew, was it yours? No, K2SO is mine. Oh, I'm sure. okay. Yeah, I think it was his. Mine was Chopper, because oh, remember, right. we, we were doing like shout outs of like uh, honorable mentions. And or, yeah, Andrew was like, Jeremiah, I'm surprised you have don't have a chopper on your list. And I was like, oh, I wonder why. And then he felt bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so K2SO, he's just really funny and snarky. He's just got this huge, huge personality. He's also a really important part of Rogue One. I mean, everyone was heartbroken when he died. He has, you know, all these very memorable, strong relationships with Cassian, even Jin, eventually, who he at first hates, but he's just throws to the ground <laughs> intensely. Yeah, <laughs> but he's just a really cool and interesting droid that we all wish were still around. Well, we get to see him in well, Andor. That's so. true. That's true. So I don't know how much we're gonna see of him because I'm sure it's just it's twelve I, episodes. So I don't know how much of I wouldn't be see, surprised but... if we get his arc. In the sense, like, we get, like, Andor finds him and then, right. like, changes him and makes him... Yeah, because mm. I'm assuming season two will have a lot more K2SO if he finds him this season, first season. Mm -hmm. So, um, it'd be definitely fun to see more K2SO because he's, like, I, I can't remember if I have him in my top five, but I definitely one of my favorites. So, that's a good number two. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Before you hate me, hear me out, all right? <laughs> uh -oh. Okay. Uh oh, Lord. my other one. Uh wait, wait. It's L three Lando's droid. Oh, oh it's nah. I'm, that's fine. I'm... I thought you were gonna go chopper. That, I thought that you were gonna be something. 
I thought you'd do something crazy, like some obscure one that like everyone hates. But, the mouse droid. Uh, I, I could I could see you like in L three. So. Yeah, like that's your number one. Explain. Well, not number one, tied for number one, <laughs> but oh. yeah, I couldn't decide. Oh, so you but... have you have another one too? Oh no, this is just top two, oh. but they're both tied for first place. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. So what was your number two two then? Well, okay. yeah. What was your third place? Oh yeah, what's the third? Place? Um. Oh, that, oh that I have to an put honorable you mention. No, no, no. Okay, okay I'll get to that. Go, go ahead. <laughs> but a lot ahead, of people yeah, have different opinions about L three, but. I really like her, especially after reading the book Last Shot, which is a great book. Um, she has like oh. a really deep relationship with Lando. She cares about the people around her in general. And in the book, she is really a key player. She figures out this whole big scheme and comes to the rescue quite a few times. She's highly intelligent, and she stands up for what she believes in. And I know a lot of people like find that annoying how they did that in the solo movie, but I thought it was like a cool message. Um, she's very unique and like R2 and K2SO and all these other droids, she has a big personality. And I just actually finished watching Solo yesterday. She had so many funny lines, just really makes you laugh. And it was really sweet when they sort of made her become part of the Falcon, when they hooked her head up there. So mm -hmm. that is why I like L3. Please don't hate me. But I do have the honorable mention, which is okay. Dio. The guy from oh, Rise Dio. Of Snow. yeah, he's just so sweet and shy, and he's like funny, but also like melts slash breaks your heart. He's a small, mm -hmm. good-natured, adorable little robot. Yeah, I feel like they should have introduced him earlier. I yeah. feel like they're like, okay, we'll get one more like merch thing that we can sell of, and then <laughs> oh, definitely, he was, was a full. It kind of flopped with the merch stuff. I feel like, but he's yeah. a he's a little cute, little innocent droid. All right, Drew, what is... Oh, I guess I'm next. Sorry. <laughs> uh, your top two musical themes or songs from Star Wars. Okay, this was super hard to decide. I have played so many Star Wars songs on piano. I just love the Star Wars music. Such a big fundamental role in Star Wars. And also, shout out to Atten Piano and Patrick Pietschman, who make incredible Star Wars piano arrangements. But yeah, I've listened to them yeah. <laughs> all the time too, so that's cool. And in second place, we have Burying the Dead, which is the song playing when Ahsoka and Rex buried the clones in the season seven finale yep. of Clone Wars. Oh. Ah, it's so emotional. <laughs> and like, I hardly yeah. ever get emotional from shows. I'm just sitting there the whole time. But <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has Ahsoka's theme in it, for one. Uh, adds even more depth and realization to an already like heartbreaking moment and just the icing on the cake for what was Ahsoka's final scene in Clone Wars. So it was just a really emotional, great song. And then in first place, we have Ahsoka Lives from The Mandalorian Season 2. And I don't know if as many of you know this one, but the beginning is just like this really cheerful little tune and just makes you want to tap out the beats very like celebratory and it has the mandalorian theme which i have a personal connection to because i played it on the piano a lot and i really love that song and then the second half just turns around and goes for ahsoka's theme which is really emotional and pulls at your heart and i mean it has these two great themes in it just smushed into one song like why wouldn't you like that and then it ends in a very dramatic and fulfilling note uh, the entirety is just beautiful. It has this great energy, and it's just one of the few songs that I will listen to over and over and over, and just never get tired of it or love it any less. And you know what else you can drink over and over and never love it any less? <laughs> oh wow! What's that, Lucy? <laughs> Wesley Andrews coffee and tea. Oh wow! I, that's that is true. true. I've heard a lot of people once yeah. you get hook to Wesley Angie's, you don't go back to Folgers. No. So, <laughs> well, um, <yep. laughs> let's uh, take a listen to a word from our sponsor, Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor of today's episode is Wesley Andrews Coffee and Tea. If you don't know anything about Wesley Andrews, you definitely should. They're an award-winning coffee roaster and shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. 
The awesome thing is that whether you live in the Twin Cities or not, you can get their coffee beans delivered straight to your door by ordering them online. They even have a subscription service that ensures you never run out of amazing coffee. If you've been looking for some new coffee to try or a way to elevate your normal coffee routine, now's your chance. Head over to wesleyandrews.cc, use the code Empire Radio. that's with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout, to get 15% off your first purchase of any bags of coffee or a coffee subscription. I can't think of a better deal. Get 15% off some great coffee, support a small business, and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. Lucy, say it. Do it. <laughs> do it. All right. There we go. All right. Cool. So I have, so it's kind of sad because you're talking about like the Mandalorian soundtrack. I've mm-hmm. only ever listened to the, the theme music, like the theme song. Like, I, I don't think I've ever listened to any of the other tracks. I don't now think I, I have either. Now. That's fair. Now I just I, clicked on it because it had a soak in the title. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, oh, I, I should see. definitely go and listen to that. Uh, yeah, because there's so much it's a good, song. good music, and it's way different style than we're used to a lot of times. So now I feel convicted. That, like I gotta like Lucy. Have you, you gone through and listened to the Kenobi soundtrack yet? Uh, do they have a full soundtrack or just the theme music? No, they have the whole whole uh, soundtrack they? now. Oh, because uh, Will posted it in the Discord. Because I think it was after the finale is when they release it Mm. because they didn't want to ruin like plot points based on titles. Cause that's Mm -hmm. something that happened in the, for episode one, the Phantom Menace. Oh, they released the soundtrack before the movie came out. And one of the, and one of the track title tracks was, uh, Qui-Gon's funeral. (laughs) Oh, so everyone got Why? mad, mad because they thousand or ninety nine. It's 1999, yeah. So, so, so it was a lot of people were mad because they got that major, major spoiler based on. Understandably. That. So, I think there may they might be a little bit more uh, cautious on that. They wait till the release of the movie now, so that way, well, you could have saw the movie first, but. <laughs> well, they. I think there's a, there's one movie too that. I remember the book for the movie came up before the movie. And so they're really good at that now, waiting for the novelization to come out after the movie came out. Yeah. But I think it was episode three. The novel came out before the movie came out. So people read it. That sounds about right. Yeah. But, I think I heard that before. But. All right, see, so have now- you read any of the b- novel books of the movies? Yeah, I have, let's see, the Rise of Skywalker novelization, maybe the Force Awakens. I read the Rogue One novelization. Those are the main two I remember. Oh, Rogue but One, I should read that one. It's, it's a good one. It's a really good one. Because the, the Rise of Skywalker made that movie a lot better. It did. Say. It definitely helped a lot. But I should read the Rogue One one. That sounds good. Drew only listens to the audiobooks, though, right? Do you, do you ever no? actually just read the books? Without the audio? Yeah. What am I crazy? No way. You gotta <laughs> do it at the same time. I mostly listen to them on audiobooks too, though. Yeah, I do it at the same time because well, you can follow on so you're focused, but then you also get the whole sound effects and mm. it's like a movie within your head, but you also can follow along to make sure you don't lose your spot. It would be, be so hard for me to. I've tried have to the just book. listen to it at work because I can listen to anything all day at work. So I tried to just listen to a book at work and like. I totally was like, wait, what just happened? Who just died? Like, I missed a giant plot point because, like, right. your mind doesn't stay stay there. But, yeah. All right. So that was top two music. Drew, what is the next category? That's a good question. Why Puzzler kind of dissed you in the chat. Um, Who? Who? Top two character. <laughs> oh, Puzzler is oh. like, <laughs> at least Drew listens to audio books. <laughs> okay, Puzzler. <laughs> All right, what was the, what was the top next two characters? Ooh, top two characters. So if you right. if you've listened to her podcast, she did her top ten characters. So there'll be a quiz at the end. There'll be a quiz <laughs> at the end. <laughs> but yes, so Lucy, go ahead. All right. So in second place, 
we have Rex CT7 but CT7567. <laughs> yep. But he great great character. He's very loyal, but he's also like willing to change his mindset and think through basically this lie that like all the clones have been told their whole lives, which that's like really hard to just ignore everything you've been taught for so long and try to think for yourself. And so he has so much development over the course of Clone Wars and Rebels and maybe some other shows. Uh, he's very compassionate, like no brother gets left behind. And I mean, he cries in season seven of Clone Wars, but I have more to say about that later. So I won't go into that right now, but <laughs> it just, his character really shows this whole new perspective from this whole group of people that before was like, oh, these mindless soldiers wandering around the background of the prequels. So I thought great choice to put his character in the Clone Wars and he's really great. And then in first place, this will come as no surprise to anyone, but my first favorite character is Ahsoka. And she just, to me, she's the embodiment of Star Wars. She's just like a lot of people who are just casual fans or don't like, haven't seen the movies, just like, oh, Star Wars, that movie series, people shoot each other. There's a lot of war. And, <laughs> but it's so much more than that. I mean, music, characters, emotions, relationships, all this stuff, all the community. It's so much more than just a giant gunfight. There's so many more beautiful aspects that just bring so many people together. And Ahsoka really does that too, because sure, she's great at fighting, great commander, but she also just, she cares so much about people and she brings many people together around her. She helps many people. And that's really what Star Wars is about to me. And she also has so much growth over, over the course of Clone Wars, Rebels, other upcoming shows. Mando. Mandalo. Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> but she's very clever, thinks on her feet. It's really empathetic. I could go on and on forever, but that is my basic summary of Ahsoka. Awesome. Can't go wrong with Ahsoka. No, you cannot. No. All right, Drew. What's next? Uh, I asked the last one, Jeremiah. Did you? Oh, I can't. I did, but I do have a question for because it seems like Jeremiah wrote this list because this question's not on there, but... Oh, okay. Okay, so <laughs> if... What's your top two favorite books? Oh, oh wait. Mm. Don't what? What? <laughs> answer that because we got a voicemail about that. So okay, never mind. We'll, okay. we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, Maybe that's why it's not on, on this I'll, list. I'll, yeah, plus we didn't do top five books. So I took from our oh, top fives that we did. That's a good point. But and I I've mean, only read... He's a I've only read book person. So I've only read four books, so I we can't do a tough. Yep. That's true. <laughs> we'll have to um, do a top two for you too. Maybe. Um, <laughs> but uh, characters. So top next one. Top two moments in all of Star Wars. All right. So in second place, we have the Ahsoka and Vader duel in Rebel season two. Particularly that moment she slices his helmet. Ah, it's just. It's so heartbreaking what the relationship came to. They were just so close. Like, when she, like, Vader says, like, Ahsoka, and then you're like, oh, oh, is he, like, somehow going to turn back to the light side? But no, he's like, then you will die. And it's even worse than it was before. Ugh. And then when Ahsoka's like, I won't leave you, not this time. There's so much significance to that. Like, when she left the Order, she probably feels, like, guilty and responsible for not sending that hollow message in Season 7 of Clone Wars. Just so many different factors behind all those quotes. Uh, it's a great, great scene. And in first place, also with Ahsoka, because why not? It is the Ahsoka and Rex scene in Clone Wars Season 7, the final episode. Uh, the one where he's like, those men, my brothers, are willing to die and take you and me along with them. Uh, so devastating. So much emotion. Rex cries. It's evident. There's so much emotion in that scene. All these built-up feelings these two characters are experiencing from throughout Order 66 just all come out. And just the scene really makes you realize the significance. Like, all these hundreds and hundreds of guys who these two characters were like so close with throughout these three years just suddenly turning on them that's horrible and just you see how far the relationship has come the animation visuals of course are beautiful acting is beautiful 
all the lines, just everything's top notch. And then just all the facial expressions. Ah, <sighs> just definitely my favorite order, six, order 66 moment. And I drew the scene during quarantine and put it up in my hallway so I can see it every day. If that's an <laughs> indication of how much I love it. So, and also a couple quick honorable mentions. This one was like really close to part two, but when Sabine like tells her story while angrily fighting Kanan in Rebels season three, oh, that, it's really good. That that gets me every time. It's a little tearjerker scene. For oh, me. it is. Yeah. Uh, and then Ahsoka and Maul's conversation and duel in season seven also amazing. And then when Obi Wan slices off part of Vader's helmet in Kenobi, I like the the similarities between that and then the second favorite scene. So mm -hmm. yeah, so my, many great scenes in the saga. But my favorite thing that people have pointed out with the whole mask thing with Ahsoka and then mm -hmm. doing it, and then Obi Wan doing it is how each of them could only take off half the helmet. Ahsoka, oh. Ahsoka did the right side. Uh, yep. Obi Wan did the left side, but Luke Skywalker was able to take the whole helmet off. Oh, so. When people pointed that out, I was like, dang it, that scene in Return of the Jedi is so much better. Because like, when I started seeing that people post that, I went and watched that scene. Just fast forward right there <laughs> and I watched it and I was like, dang, this has so much more punch to it now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, Drew, what's the next category? Top two least favorite moments. <laughs> all right <laughs> number two is the pawn and leia romance moments in the first half of empire strikes back oh. i know what people think of that <laughs> here we go <laughs> i know people think of them as like this classic couple the whole i love you i know but han is just so creepy yeah, <laughs> in some is. of those scenes yeah it's, it's just a so different awkward. time in the world <laughs> it's so cringy to watch and i just like please fast forward somebody yeah if i mean han did that i now, think of it canceled for sure <laughs> I think think of it like Jeremiah thinks of the first half of A New Hope. So, oh, <laughs> dang! And I know things were different back then, but still, it's uh, it's very weird. Yeah. Then, sort of similar, I guess it runs in the family. Anakin Padme's romance moments in Attack of the Clones is my yeah. least favorite. Yeah. I mean, pretty much everyone agrees they are just so cringy and creepy. And just makes you wonder why? Why does Padme find this creep attractive? And uh, how are they supposed to be <laughs> love when this is how they act? It's it's awful. <laughs> Although great memes came out of it, though. Yeah. The, I don't like sand quote. So that that was a plus. And all mm. the scenery is beautiful. Padme's outfits were amazing. And they definitely needed to don't have that the cows, concept in the movie. Lucy, come on, the cows. The cows. Come on. In the I will say no more about that. <laughs> 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 I mean, there were like. They definitely need to have that concept because so many great things came after it later, but the way they did it was just lacking. And that's my rant for today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Fun, fun. All right, Drew. Now we're getting into some controversial territory. Oh, yeah. What's the next, yeah. what's the next category? You ask it because it's your turn. Is it my turn? Dang, Chat, I can't can remember. You guys, like, no, you just, you just asked the favorite moments because then Drew... Wait. No, oh, I, Drew did ask. I, I did okay. the last. Never mind. I can't yeah, remember. Can you keep oh, a whatever. poll of how many times Jeremiah's messed up? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've already messed up like three or four times. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So, uh, next one. Rank the trilogies. So, how do you rank these three trilogies? Here we go. Because I was okay. say, here's the thing. So be careful, like, Lucy. Be careful. Well, be careful. But also, like, so, <laughs> like, one, you were introduced to, to Star Wars by your father. So like that obviously true. that's gonna change your perspective, but like I feel like a lot of people your age might favor the sequel trilogy because it's what they in a sense grew up with. It's what maybe yeah the most like they go to see a Star Wars movie for the first time and it's true. a sequel trilogy. So it's interesting because you have that pull from two ends of the spectrum on how you interpret Star Wars. So what's how do you rank mm -hmm. the trilogies? What's your bottom okay. trilogy? <laughs> well, thank you for taking all the words out of my mouth but nope. this number three <laughs> that's okay that's okay but third place is the prequel trilogy i mean ah. there's a lot of poor acting not from everyone not from everyone but certain people poor acting <laughs> some of it's poor dialogue certain choices in production didn't help either but 
it did definitely like contribute some really important like jumping off points for other media, but the actual movies themselves were not the best. There's definitely parts I enjoy throughout the trilogy, things I really enjoy, but just as a whole, it's not amazing. And then, okay, second place. You're right. It's the original trilogy, second place. Oh. I do understand. <laughs> oh, my art. <laughs> Poor Drew. But I do understand it really means a lot of, to people, but it's just, for me, it's not like nostalgic and things that were impressive back then, seeing it for the first time, just don't seem as impressive now. And also, it is mainly a bunch of just my white male characters that I can't really relate to and parts of it that are like clearly made with little value of women and it does contain some of my least favorite moments in there too but that said there are some really great parts parts of it great story it's really enjoyable just not my favorite movies ever and that does mean that my first favorite is the sequels and I get why people have issues with it there is some of the acting is kind of questionable um, parts of the storyline too and the last jedi is people have that's very controversial but <laughs> i would r- rather watch the force awakens over a new hope just any day just more interesting to me and the age that i live in and have lived in compared to the original trilogy it's more diverse better visuals great music the original trilogy had great music too of course but it's also much less sexist, uh, overall just more appealing to me. Still not my favorite movies of all time or anything, but I do really enjoy watching The Force Awakens and also The Rise of Skywalker a decent amount. All right. Hot take. The hot take. The chat's like, oh, I think I heard Drew's heart shatter from all the way over there. So. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's an interesting perspective. So that's what I was all like. Could go either way on this. But... <laughs> this next one will tell tell us exactly. a little bit oh, no. more. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, no. oh. so. So what's the club. final thing? What's the final thing, Drew? All right, the final thing. Rank all eleven films, Lucy. We may hang up go. on you, depending. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. All right. In eleventh place, we have the Attack of the Clones. There's just again some really poor acting. Okay. I just oh, I facepalm sometimes. Although, again, not everyone was bad at acting in the movie, just some of them. There are, again, some really questionable dialogue and scenes. And when I enjoy mocking a movie more than I enjoy it because it's <laughs> good, there's a problem. Um, so, sure, like, there are some good parts overall, like, a really important part of the saga story wise, just not told and produced as well as it should have been. And I will say that I got tired of watching it. So if that tells you anything, Did then the CGI 10th place. Did kind of throw you off a little bit too? Uh, With all the maybe a little clones. bit. Oh. oh yeah. No, no clone armor in any of the prequel movies. It's all CGI. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, I did not notice that. So, but. so <laughs> in uh, cause it was in, when we see Tamar Morrison in Kenobi, when he has, when he's a, a homeless clone trooper, that's the first time he ever wore trooper oh, armor. armor. So that is wow. inter- that is a crazy fun fact. So maybe that'll help you like it a little less. <clears throat> um, and then let's see. In tenth place, the last Jedi. Just some confusing <laughs> things that made you wonder why in the galaxy they did that. <laughs> um, some actors weren't completely convincing. It still kept me interested and wasn't bad enough to make me tired of watching. And I do like it a lot more than Drew does, but it's still nowhere near my favorite. Hey, as long as it's in your bottom two, I'm okay with this. (laughs) In my first place, Last Jedi. Oh, (laughs) that would be funny. That would be so funny. (laughs) That would not be funny. (laughs) All right. Drew can't take another heartbreak at this point. But (laughs) In ninth place, I have The Phantom Menace. It doesn't deserve as much hate as it gets. It is a decent movie. And of course, the books add better understanding and enjoyment of it. And some acting was questionable, again, and some parts were slow, but I wasn't openly mocking it the whole time, so <laughs> that's why it wasn't completely at the bottom. All right. But, okay, number eight. Here is where things get a little bit even more controversial. Number eight is A New Hope. <laughs> okay, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Drew. Oh. 
Like it's it's a good movie though. I can see why a lot of people really like it. It just didn't impress me personally. I know it was probably amazing at the time for a lot of people, but you know, I saw it at the Clone Wars Rebels age. There wasn't that nostalgia or wow factor for me. I don't love it as much as Drew. Don't hate the first half as much as Jeremiah. I'm just neutral. But All right. number seven, you have the Return of the Jedi. And some parts were just a little unnecessary to me. And it's good, just not the best. Wasn't that fascinated with it. And I don't really have anything else to say about that movie. <laughs> but at number six, we're getting up there. It is Revenge of the Sith. For the most part, it's a pretty good movie. You know, it's very tragic and heartbreaking, which balances out the questionable acting and dialogue in some scenes. But great visuals, great storyline, better dialogue than in Attack of the Clones, at least. <laughs> Made you feel big emotions other than boredom and frustration, which is important. Um, definitely a really important movie that so much other media is based off of. Between, like, Order 66, all that different Anakin turning dark side, everything. But that's how it made it up to number six. So and then, what what don't you like about it? Episode two. Um, like why is it so low? Because a lot of people kind of have the high ground. Oh gosh. No, no, the high ground's great. <laughs> but, um, just again, some of the questionable acting and dialogue. But okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, in fifth is the Rise of Skywalker, and it's a good movie. I wanted to keep watching it. I enjoyed it instead of constantly making fun of it. Um. And I know a lot of people have reservations about it. I get that some of the acting and other parts were weird, but I mean, the visuals and music were great. And I really liked certain aspects like Ben turning to the light side, the whole dyad in the force, and just the entire journey of the movie. And the novelization makes it so much better too. True. And overall, I would definitely watch again at some point. <laughs> How many times did you see it in theaters? None. I have not seen a single. The, Wait, still, oh yeah, Star you celebration said that. Oh, was yeah. the first time that I've seen something Star Wars in theaters. But so yeah, yeah she saw the movies. first two episodes of Kenobi in the theater with a bunch I of did. people that deserve to be there. <laughs> yep, she's way cooler than us. Yes, true. <laughs> no, that's fair. But that's crazy that you didn't see those new ones. And I know. Wow. And then, in fourth place, we have The Empire Strikes Back. And it was much better than I remembered. So, like, several months ago, before I had rewatched all the movies, I was convinced I disliked the original trilogy and really liked the prequels. And then after watching them again, that completely switched around. And so Empire Strikes Back was much better than I remembered. It was entertaining, captivating, some cringy moments, and my least favorite moment, second least favorite moment. But <laughs> overall, it was a really good movie. Okay, and then third place, The Force Awakens. And it was pretty good. There's this constant action story. I never got, like, bored or wanted to speed it up like I did in some of the other movies. There were barely any unnecessary pieces. And, as always, some of the acting could use some work, but overall, I really liked it and what it brought to the saga. And then, for those of you who have been paying attention, this means that the two... What are they called? The extra, not extra. Uh, anthology standalone. Yes, the standalone films. That's interesting. Those two. <laughs> I know. Controversies all around. I, I knew that one of them was going to be your number one, and I can probably still guess your number one. But Okay. but We'll yeah. see. <laughs> but in second place, it is Solo. Oh, For yes, the first... that was right. That's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the first 43 minutes, I did not like it that much. I thought it was confusing, some parts were not that realistic, and I was starting to give up hope on the movie. But then the second half redeemed itself, and it made me really like it. Parts of it were very funny. I laughed a lot, and it made me really excited. I actually cheered when the heroes scored big victories, which never happens because I'm just sitting there internally going, yay. So <laughs> it, was, it was a pretty good movie, in my opinion. And if you don't agree... Just don't hate me, please. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, I, then that doesn't that's mean... That's interesting, because I feel like a lot of people with that movie have the same thing. Because you, mm. you can almost tell exactly when that movie switches directors. Oh. And it's... Yeah. And it's right around the same part for everyone is when yeah. they actually start I, liking the film. I remember my initial, like, 
review I posted on Facebook after I saw it was like the first half didn't sound like feel like a Star Wars movie, mm-hmm. but then like the yeah. second half it got really good. So it's definitely an underrated Star Wars film. And and, sure. and a lot of that has to do with the fact that The Last Jedi came out and the hate on that movie was way too intense. So a lot of people didn't go see Solo right. in the oh, theaters. Yeah. So I remember when I was in, I went to saw Solo in theaters. I was stressed, like straight up. Because I was like, if they ruin this, I, there's nothing else. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to do with my life. So I was really stressed out in that moment. And then at the beginning, I was like, ugh. But then the mall part at the end changes. I was stood up and clapped and it was good. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, Lucy. Your then, number one. Is... Number one, Rogue One. Yay! Uh, yay! <laughs> it was. It's just a really good movie. It kept me interested. You know, beautiful visuals, convincing acting, great storyline, mm-hmm. and it's even even better after reading Catalyst, which is the book that has the years leading up to the movie, and then the novelization of it also is really good. Um, beautiful story and message and it is unique that the good guy is lost for once but i just i would watch that movie again and again and just really love what it brought to the saga now so catalyst do you think that is gonna have a lot to do with this new show that's coming out with andor or is that like Mm. before andor kind of stuff as well i mean because cassian at that point he's like not really involved like he i don't think when it, when does not, catalyst like, take place exactly mm-hmm. um let's see when Jin is first born i think about when it starts oh so it's like so like four yeah I assume right Trevor? So, so, so then it doesn't mention casting anywhere in the book so okay, i don't know so there's not really gonna be a lot so Jin was born before the fall of the republic right because she's because so. she'd be way older than 19 yes, years yes, old yes. okay yeah she was interesting no because my it's question a good book, though. i was just curious because i was wondering if there is a book out there that could have some issues Overlap. with canon yeah because mm. that's always a concern right is when these new shows and stuff come out like how canon are they and like that's what's really good about mando is that like they don't have a lot of stuff to ruin to ruin. canon essentially <laughs> with Uh-oh. like kenobi everyone was like on edge about literally everything <laughs> and it was like people just hated on him because of the canon stuff and they didn't even let the story get to where it was gonna go before they hated it so i think it's that's my question. That was my question. Yeah, the like, the only thing with Andor would be that well, I don't know about books and comics, but it takes place during the same timeline as Rebels. So um, it'll be interesting to to see, if, to see like if there's any like references to events that happen in Rebels, because obviously in Rebels the Rebel Alliance officially comes together with Mon Mothma's speech mm-hmm. to the galaxy and then a, rond- a secret rendezvous point, and then you see like all the ships come in from all these different rebel cells that want to join the Alliance. And so I feel like they could do that in, uh, and, or I can probably, it'll be in season two. Um, but it'll be Have cool they to announced see season two already. What do you mean? For Andor? Yeah. They've announced that a long time ago, like last summer. Cause, cause season one is going to take place, starts at five years before Rogue oh, One. Okay. And it t- takes place over a year span, but season two is, takes place over a span of four years and so there's so it's uh season two will be every three episodes is one year so at some point there could be cassian could be on a ship that arrives at the rendezvous point where the ghost has mon mothma in it so it'll be cool because we could see a live action ghost and Mon Mothma and Hera. It wouldn't and all be them. surprising That'd be great. to me because especially we're gonna get a lot of these characters as actors in the Ahsoka show too yeah. by then, so they could just pull them over and kind of like de-age them a little bit, or not because they don't even de-age Anakin anymore, so they could just not. Do oh, it, so. oh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I wrote down your top ranking, so it'd be from the bottom going up. It'd be two, eight, one, four, six, 
three nine five seven solo rogue one it's a very interesting list it's very <laughs> very all over the place uh, it is. solid though it's it is solid. solid i i still think you should have revenge assist a little bit higher but mm. but you do you <laughs> um but yeah jedi should be at the bottom right, well she she has them at, at second from the bottom which which is fine because that's where I had mine in my ranking. Second on the bottom, I definitely and, had mine in the bottom right? <laughs> and and Rogue One is technically my top top one when, when I from the show from the technically technically because it's Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One are they're so close for me. But yeah. officially in our rankings, I have it as my top one. But mm. I feel was like that number two for me, Jeremiah. I think it was. Because is it their number two or number? No, it's definitely number two. But it was number two because your number one is episode four. It's hard too because and the it makes, more I think about it, it's like Rogue One makes a New Hope even better film, which is why I like it. But then it's like I almost want to like Rogue One as my favorite because of how good it is and how well it does make the films better. But it is my right. now Lucy. It is my wife's favorite Star Wars movie. Oh, like if. If I can, like, talk her into, like, sitting down and watching Star Wars, she's like, well, we can just watch Rogue One. And so... That's a solid choice. I've... You know, we've watched it a lot, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a very interesting list, like I said. And I know that I think that if... Because when we did our movie rankings, it was literally the day Episode Nine came out on home media and oh. so i was only able to, i've only seen it saw episode nine twice and i think that after you know these couple years of pondering episode nine i had it up a little bit higher in my list but yeah. but i think i put it way more down towards the bottom now so i could change my list but yeah, I wonder, like, in a few years, we can go back and redo our list when they add more movies. Yeah, like they're ever going to add new movies? Like, hey, well, yeah, because apparently we're supposed to directors... get one next. We're supposed to get one next year, and that's not even a thing anymore. So, like, yeah, I don't know. Taika if... doesn't even know when certain characters are in Star Wars. Yeah, did you hear that, Lucy? Did you hear about that, huh? Lucy? So, Taika, Taika, was it Taiki? Ta I even... Taika Watiti. So he directed the new Thor movie. And Natalie Portman is in there, and supposedly, allegedly, he asked, allegedly, he asked her, "Do you want to be in the new Star Wars movie that I'm going to be directing?" Oh, not remembering not that remember she was in three <laughs> Star Wars movies. He didn't remember that. Supposedly, so, supposedly, like people are saying, it could be a joke, but I don't think it's a joke. I think he just really oh doesn't know that much about Star Wars and which is before. crazy. That's because, kind of a problem. Because yeah. he's in, yeah. like he's involved with like the Mandalorian and stuff. So it's well, he directed episode eight of season one of Mando, right. which is one of the best episodes for sure. And especially he... the whole like droid situation when they're shooting and they're missing like crazy. The scouts, like that whole scene was hilarious. But, they had, and I think he it was announced that he's directing an episode in Mando season three. Oh, so, so. or he directed one because aren't correct. they wrapped? Well, yeah, he yes, past tense, he directed one, but yeah. yes, so be cool to see that. But we don't know if it was him joking around yeah, or if he was serious. You never know with him; he's kind of crazy. But sh she could definitely play like an alien or do like the voice of a droid or something like, well, I was saying last night in my stream that maybe they could do like a f flashback of some sort or a flash forward flash forward. because, because it isn't the movie that he's making supposed to be about the high Republic. Uh, we're not sure. It's, so, I think the original rumors, it's supposed to be was. like, completely removed from the skywalker saga so it could yeah, be hundreds of years in the future or hundreds of years in the past i think that they are focusing gonna be focusing on the high republic era if for... they do a high republic and they have a yoda meditation scene and then he can like see somewhat of a future and then padme's in there possibly 
I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. I'm just probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So that is Lucy's rankings for various things. Some hot takes. Some <laughs> some things that we expected, but True. it was cool to see a lot of your perspectives and your views on Star Wars. Um, is there anything else you want to say about Star Wars? Um. It's amazing. <laughs> yep. Clone Wars. If Clone Wars had been in there and the Bad Batch, probably would be on the top. But right. Yeah, it's hard to rank the. And have you seen, have you watched Resistance? No, I have not yet. Okay. I should. She but... <laughs> said that she would as soon as you read Lost Star. No, that's did not. I say that? Yeah, probably should yeah. say that. Have you read a Lost Star? Uh yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. So that concludes the interview of Lucy, but we still have everyone's favorite part of of the uh, podcast episodes, and we're gonna transition over to voicemail time. So let's do that right now. It's voicemail time. <laughs> Never gets old, Drew. Never gets old. Hey, Amazing. I'm, I'm just happy Andrew made me sound good, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. All right. <sighs> so we have five voicemails tonight. Um, these first two are interesting because they're from a first-time sender. Hmm. And oh. um, she probably didn't know that Lucy was on tonight. And I think these questions that... The question that she, the uh, the primary question that she has in her second voicemail is very relevant for Lucy to answer as well. So let's listen to this first one from Addie. Hey, Empire Radio. My name's Addie. I am one of your younger listeners. I have been listening to you guys for over a couple months. Now, this is part one of two uh, voicemails I'm going to send in. This one is uh, comments. I just wanted to say that I really have loved your podcast. It's been a very huge part of my week. I love listening to them. I love how you guys are so funny and the little fights that you guys do. Um, I'll see you in the next uh, voicemail. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and may the Force be with you. Bye! All right. So congratulations on the first voicemail. Yeah, yes. that's exciting. We always love hearing voicemails from for the first time from a new person. So because you sure. never know what you're going to get. You, you could get something. You could end uh, up on an interview like you, me. You could end up on <laughs> an interview. But um, that being said, let's listen to Eddie's second message to us tonight. And it has an interesting question. And like I said, I like that Lucy is here for this question. Mm. Oh, Hey, Empire Radio, it's Addy again. Uh, this is part two of that voicemail I was telling you about. Now, this one is, I'm asking for help. I know that Jeremiah has experience with Bad Badge fan fiction, and I'm making some of my own. I'm making a fan film, and I need a professional's opinion. I don't, because personally, I don't know what I'm doing, and he's kind of like an expert. He's like the best. And of course, Drew and Andrew, you guys can also read it. So if I was able to send it to you, would you read it, rate it, and like um, just edit it, see how um, you think? Help me, Empire Radio. You're my only hope. Uh. Thank you again so much. You guys are awesome. Please give me an answer in your next video um, episode. Love you guys. Have an awesome day. May the force be with you. All right. So yes, yes, Eddie, I am the best. I am a professional. You're you're right. You got that. Um, uh, chill, chill, chill. And so it's really cool that you want to start writing your own fan fictions. We are definitely a supporter of fan fictions here at Empire Radio. True. Um, For sure. And it's great that you sent this in when Lucy's here. You probably didn't even know that. Um, and force if you, works in mysterious ways. It does. Ooh. And so we're not sure exactly where you are in listening to all our episodes. I don't know right. if you've gotten she to Andrew. Andrew. So, Andrew, so she's probably, probably listening the back. back. But yes, Lucy is famous for her fan fictions. And so <laughs> True. Um, 
so and voice I'll acting. Answer, and so. voice acting. So I will answer your question first, and we'll hand it over to Lucy because she could help you a lot with that. But all right. Um, for me, when I did the Bad Batch fan fiction stuff, um, I was able to do it so well in quotation marks because <laughs> um, there's a lot of story already written, and like I could go off of a lot of things already. So it wasn't just you know starting from scratch. Um, I, for me, that would be very hard to start a Star Wars story from scratch. So my advice to you would be um, take something that you already know in Star Wars and add to it. And so that could be, uh, you know, like a scene between two characters that, you, you know, like in the movie they have the scene and you're like, well, what happened after this? Like that they didn't show, like write something about that or take a character or some characters that you like and, you know, make a story about them that kind of relates to something else in Star Wars. And so I think that would be an easy starting point for your first one, just to start with something you already know and kind of add to it. Um, and then work your way up to doing some fully original stories. Um, but I think, Eddie, for better advice, uh, <laughs> Lucy could help you with that just because she's written so many uh, fan fiction things um, and you should probably listen to her podcast more than us and get connected and with her. Also just send Welcome. it to her, Lucy. Yeah. Just so Lucy could, all. Lucy could probably be a better uh, mentor to you than <laughs> me, just because you're both seem to be in the same uh, age category. We'll probably, say. Yeah. All right. So, but Lucy, what would be your advice to Addie for writing uh, fan fictions? All right. Well, I completely agree with everything you've said, Jeremiah, especially jumping off of like characters you already know. You may know that's how I got started with fan fiction is from writing about Ahsoka. And so that definitely helps if you're writing about someone or like a time period or an aspect of Star Wars that you already love. Um, I guess there's a couple different ways to actually technically start out. You could just make an outline of what you want to happen or just jump right in and start writing wherever that takes you. And both of them are pretty good ways. Uh, me personally, I like to sort of make an outline and then fill in all the details as I go. But I guess I, you also are writing a fan film, you said? So that sounds really cool. I guess what you could do... Um, fan film, you could watch I'm, fan films that's on true. YouTube. There's... Oh, yeah. So many out there. Some of them are kind of corny, but there's a lot of really good ones out there. Um, I think one of the best ones is Mall Apprentice. That's, yeah. that is probably, I think that might be the number one watched fan film. Uh, Even made. over Star Wars Theory? Probably over Star Wars Theory, too. Um, I would have to go check, but I remember there's like 20 some million views on mall apprentice um it is a little uh pg-13 maybe uh, it's a little it's a little the fight scenes are a little uh graphic at times not like blood necessarily but i don't because i don't know how old you are and what your parents will allow you to watch but um stuff like that there's tons of stuff on there so get ideas from a from fan films that that'll help you a lot too yeah i mean that's a tried and true method on getting better at anything. If you want to write fan fiction, read more fan fiction. If you want to make a good fan film, watch more fan films. So it really is definitely a learning curve. And like me, the first ones might be only 40 page books, but <laughs> you will, I believe in you, Addy. You can work your way up there. And then I, if you ever want to share that with me, then I would love to read it and good luck. Yeah. So. Um, Lucy's podcast is for light and life. And so I would definitely recommend you look that up on Spotify or whatever. Um, uh, she, she could definitely help you with that. And you can send in voicemails to Lucy too on her podcast. Yeah. So if you have more questions, you can definitely, uh, hit her up with that. All right, cool. Thank you, Addie, for those. Hopefully we hear from you again in the future. Oh, and you did also ask um if you could send us your fan fictions um you could we have our fan email empire radio fans at gmail so if you you know type something up or even make a video or something you can email us there 
Um, and that will definitely be the easiest way to get in contact with us. And we'll, we'll definitely read that. It'll be, I'm excited to see what you come up with. All right. Yep. And then we could also send that to Lucy too, if you give us permission. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we can just we'll forward it to that. Lucy that way too. Yeah. All right. Next voicemail is from Squeaky from the Discord. So let's take a listen. Hi, I'm Power Radio. This is Squeaky here with a shorter one this time. Um, if you could cast any actor as a live action Grand Admiral Thrawn, who would you choose? Anyway, thank you very much and may the force be with you. Bye. All right. Thank you for the question, Squeaky. So who would we cast as live action uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn? Thrawn um, so the voice actor for Thrawn and Rebels, La- is it Lars Mikkelsen or Mads Mikkelsen? I think Lars. Lars, because they're brothers. One, one's, uh... I mean, I've only heard of a Lars, so... Uh, well, because, um, what's his, uh, Jin Erso's dad, Galen mm-hmm. Erso, that's, they're brothers, so Lars, oh. Lars Mikkelsen, Thrawn's voice actor, and then... Um, Mads. it's a brother to G- Galen Urso. The, the the actors are brothers. The actors, yes, 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 yes. yes. So uh, I I can never remember who's who, but so mm-hmm. yes, the voice actor for uh, Thrawn would be my number one choice, just because Thrawn's voice is so iconic. Like it's it's kind of more necessary. Like we were all sad that Ashley Eckstein wasn't live action. Ahsoka, totally. <laughs> but at the end of the day, her voice is just like kind of like a straightforward female mm-hmm. voice, and you could get away with live action. Ahsoka would be a lot older than the last time we seen an animated, so you could definitely do with a voice change, which is understandable. But I think for Thrawn, the voice has to be spot on. Um, so, and I the rumor is that he is who was cast for Thrawn in live action Ahsoka. It's just a rumor, I believe, still. Um, but the kind of second choice that a lot of people had was uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, but he said no because he doesn't want to have blue paint on his face every day. So what about you guys? You'd, what do you think? You would rather make really bad Marvel movies and stuff? Oh. Ooh, hot take. Hot take. take. It is kind of – second movie was kind of crappy. But anyway, yeah, but what do you guys yeah. think? Who would you go with for live action Grand Animal Thrawn? Uh, I mean, I haven't really put much thought into this. I guess I would go with the voice actor because you are right. The voice is definitely a really big part of it. So, I mean, that seems like a solid choice. Yeah. Who's the voice actor for the novels? Is it the same? Uh, it's probably either Mark Thompson or, um, let's see the guy's name. I don't know. Probably Mark Thompson, but I don't know. Also really good. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I think for me it's it's honestly like like Jeremiah said, like I'm down for that. Also Benedict Cumberbatch would have been my original choice and I think that was like a lot of people's pick. But stick to Marvel, I guess. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. All Jerica right. says that it is Mark Thompson the audiobook, so oh, cool. okay. Thanks, no, Jerica. It's really, really good. His voice in the audiobooks is also really well. So. It's brilliant. All right. All right. Next one is from Jedi Master. And unfortunately, it's not a dad joke. I don't know what happened to that streak he had going, but let's listen to Jedi Master. Hello, Empire Radio. This is Jedi Master. I just listened to your uh, top five Kenobi moments, and you didn't mention my favorite one. Uh, my favorite Kenobi moment is in the first half of A New Hope. Uh, yes, I know Jeremiah, it's trash, but uh, we don't talk about that. What we focus on is the good parts. And my favorite part of A New Hope, probably, would be whenever Obi-Wan Kenobi is explaining to Luke Skywalker about the Jedi. Every time I watch that, and I do watch the first half of A New Hope, every time I watch that, it gives me goosebumps. It's really cool and amazing, and I love it. It's my favorite Kenobi moment. So, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. May the force be with you. Always. <laughs> All 
All right, Jamie. You got master. Thank you for your your top moment, and you gotta work on your your outros a little bit. Sometimes we get those long pauses, and we're like, "Is he done? Is he done? Nope, he still has something to say." So it's like, but, dude. Well, Jeremiah, you definitely never did this, but I I used to have a voicemail on my phone that was like, "Hello." Oh, you one of those? Hello. Guys. Hello. Who is this? Oh, just came. This is a voicemail. And people would get you're one of those guys. The time. <laughs> Can't I was in high school. When I was in high school, people hated me. So Lucy, go ahead. You can take it. Steal it. People, people love it. <laughs> nah, she's gonna have a, a more well written. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, voicemail thing. All right, but we have our last one for the night. Question from Jerica, which you guys were about to answer. Um, oh, oops. <laughs> but. She had the question, so let's listen to that from Jerica. Hello, Empire Radio and Lucy. This is Jerica popping in with another question. Um, I think I might have asked this before, but I think enough new things might have come out to ask this again. Um, what is your favorite Star Wars book? Mine is for sure still Lost Stars, because I love how it gives another... Um, like another point of view actually two other points of view of um the original trilogy but if i had to pick a trilogy of books it would be the throne ascendancy books because i really enjoyed those let me know what you think and may the force be with you all right thank you jerica me and jerica are in the same mind link man <laughs> the exact same all right well for me, I've read, like I said earlier in the show, only four <laughs> Star Wars books. So the High Republic trilogy and then the Ahsoka novel. Um, I was trying to, it's been a while since I've read those. So it's kind of hard to remember what I said probably in those reviews of those books. Um, but looking back, I probably like the third High Republic book. Um which one was, what was that called? I don't even remember. That's the problem. Uh, what is I it think called? I stole my backpack. Oh, I can't tell you. I can't remember. But whatever the third one was, I think there was just a lot more. Fallen uh, Star. Fallen Star, yes. Um, a lot of tension in that book that I felt was really well written. Um, I could really feel, you know, like all the Jedi they had, they could feel something was going wrong. But like, and it was, everything was off, and they just couldn't figure it out. And I, I could feel that eeriness while reading the book, so I really enjoyed that. It was, I, and I couldn't believe that it brought tears to my eyes reading a book at the end. Um, so that was like the one High Republic novel that I read that actually like made a lot of sense. It was the first one, and the second one was so choppy sometimes that it was hard to follow. Yeah, but this one was very. I thought it, the writing of it was. And it's, I mean, it's yeah, one I of think the best Star Wars novel writers I think out there. So the that's next, why. the next adult novel for the High Republic is that October or something. Oh, I really? think. So I'll probably have to read that one for my job, <laughs> but um, I'm actually kind of looking forward to reading it. Just, because, but I've also been wanting to like read some other books because like everyone just keeps talking about like the Thrawn novels. And I'm like, but there's wow. like, what? there's like six you of them. Should read them. There's like six of them. Like, yes, during they're the, good, though. Jeremiah. During, just get top eleven books now. Because I, during the VCU when Lucy was sending in all those mm-hmm. Thrawn ones and mm-hmm. making comments, I'm like, I don't know what she's talking about. She's making references to these things, and I'm like, ah, who are these? Go I, read the books. I have all of them. You, can, I can just drop them off. And One of can, them is signed by Timothy Zahn, so be careful. Oh, I don't know but... if I want to. But, I don't know if I want to touch that, but uh, I I would be interested in reading the Thrawn books just because I puzzler. love it. We got them. We got them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Chat's down, like puzzler. blowing up right now. <laughs> but yeah, the, it was funny how the VCU made me want to read the Thrawn stuff. Just because anything with Thrawn, like, it's just so interesting and I want to like... Bro, the novels are just... Get into that. Great. But, but Lucy, you've read a lot of books. Star Wars I books. <laughs> what are your what's your top book? Favorite Star Wars oh, book gosh. of all time? I can't choose a favorite book of all time. Oh gosh, you um, have to. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's see. 
Well, some of the really good ones, uh, of course, the Thrawn books, um, the Clone Wars stories from the light and dark, I think it's called. It's like this sort of combination of a bunch of different, like, little stories from a bunch of different authors. That was really good. Uh, the Clone Wars movie um, novelization also added a lot of really interesting components to the movie. Mm. And so I thought that was pretty good. I mean, I've liked probably every single Star Wars book I read, which is a lot of them. So you can't really go wrong. So just True. read all the books. Read all of them. <laughs> That's what happened for Jeremiah, but... <laughs> Lucy, do you like Lost Star? Is that like in your top like um, 10? It's been a while since I've read that. It's been like a year or so, but I'm pretty sure I liked it. <laughs> Are there any I, books that you didn't like, Lucy? Like that you just hated that was a Star Wars book? Uh, in general, I like I have to actually think about things for me to remember that I don't like them. So in general, <laughs> when referencing anything, I'll be like, oh, I really, really liked that, even if most people wouldn't. So what I she can't think of any that comes to mind. What Ahsoka novel? Oh, uh, no. She she's loves trying, Ahsoka now. She's trying to go everywhere. What? Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Ahsoka novel is great, but All right. I can't think of any that I dislike. So. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. You don't have a top three? I don't know. I'd have oh. to write about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 tune into her she, podcast. She'll have she, it on yeah. one of her episodes. When her, she does her top 10 favorite Star Wars novels. There's a I was considering doing that for this week. I might still do that. Oh, okay, you have to now. <laughs> now you have to. But we'll all send the, the voice pressure mails. is on. <laughs> all right, cool. All right. Well, well mine is, because oh, Jeremiah well, didn't do we, ask we, Do we even need that? <laughs> have you answer? No, what Jerrica said is pretty much mine. <laughs> answer. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. We'll read Lost Star if you haven't yet. It's the best Star Wars book, hands down. All right, cool. Well, that's the end of voicemails. Only five, not 17 like back in the day during the VCU. But, uh. um, <laughs> yep, those are some good questions. We got some a new person sending in. Um, but that's the show tonight. We had our first interview in the books, uh, Lucy. True. And um, no, just... this is our second interview, Jeremiah. What? We Who? interviewed Andrew in the Mandalorian. That's on the, the Mandalorian one. podcast, though. That's... <laughs> I'm just saying, we interviewed Andrew. That, that is true. I forgot Wait, about it. Wait, didn't you interview um, Stephanie and Micaiah in the Wise Man uh, Empire, though? Yep. She got yep. you just there, too. Yep. This is uh, not our first That's a memorable interview. episode for me. So. That is, <laughs> this is that not is... our first episode. Uh, well, this is our the third interview. <laughs> I guess. Whatever. <laughs> it's the, the first of a new era. How about that? Okay, yeah. That's um. True. But because I think when we did the Wives of the Empire, I did ask him like movie rankings, favorite moments, you did, favorite I think. characters. So that um, was like but, our people loved that episode on. YouTube. I think that's our still our number one viewed podcast episode. podcast episode on YouTube. Like yes. I haven't checked in a while, but that's always been up there. But hopefully this one will get a few. What's a, a puzzler asked, wasn't Tanner on and David? Yeah, but they weren't they, interviews. It was they more like... Yeah. They're facilitators, they're, moderator, yeah. like, moderated, Mods, facilitated. Essentially. So, um, they're, so not our... This isn't our first guest, how about that? But our first, like... Yes. Official fan interview or whatever, so... Yeah, so we do have more fan interviews, or not fan interviews, but interviews uh, in the future that we have planned for this month. Um scheduling got a little wonky and so we're gonna get back to you guys when episodes are gonna be for those um we're kind of rescheduling things because some schedules got turned around um but we do have three that are agreed to doing an interview so hopefully that will be all this month maybe going into august a little bit um and we'll definitely be open to more interviews in the future maybe some other fans will invite on the show we'll see um, but that's all to be continued because once it comes to end of August, we got Andor, Bad Batch, J uh, Jedi Tales, and then who knows? So we got Lego Movie, Lego Movie Release in August, movie. and so we're we're gonna have tons and tons of content where we're not gonna be able to do interviews for maybe till the first of the year, maybe, but or closer to Christmas. But um, yeah, so um. 
Lucy, do you want to go over just promoting your podcast? Yeah, plug yourself, Lucy. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So you can find For Light and Life on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, several other places. Um, if you want, you can send me a voicemail. I would love to hear from you. There is a link in the description of my podcast if you go over there and look. Um, leave ratings and reviews. Follow it, please. Share it with your friends. We're trying to build a good podcast over here. But Yep, and so. what should people expect from your podcast? What do you have as content? Well, I have mainly Star Wars things like ranking episodes, sort of like this one. Um, I did do a Star Wars Celebration highlights episode, done fan fiction, all sort of things. But I do also, every once in a while, do a non-Star Wars related thing like my episode about allergies. So Very people have really liked my fan fiction episode. So I guess that may be the first one you want to check out. But yeah. I want to say, Lucy, your allergy episode was very fascinating. Oh, kind of <laughs> thank you. Blew my mind and kind of scared me at the same time <laughs> for my own. That's a normal scared. reaction. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. Uh... All right, cool. Yeah, definitely go support Lucy. Um, yes. When we first found out that she had a podcast, we said that she's our official little sister podcast. <laughs> so, uh, Lucy, know that if you ever need anything from Empire Radio, we will always be here to help you and um, just advice or anything about going on in your life. We're always here for you. You can contact us. Um, and if there's any other podcasts that are bullying you, we'll come beat them up for you. How about <laughs> that? Especially those Star Trek podcasts. You don't want to mess with oh, them. Yeah. We'll take, we'll, we'll go after them. Trekkies. <laughs> Trekkies. <but, laughs> um, yes. Thank so, you. So I look forward to seeing all your future content on your podcast yes. as well. Um, Thank you. But as for us, if you want to get connected to Empire Radio more, um, you can go to the link in your description. It's the links.co slash Empire Radio. Links with two eyes, And there you have a landing page for everything that would be for Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Um, you have our fan email there. You can, if you ever want to send us a, an email. And also there's a link to... Uh, needlesslynerdy.com, which is a podcast network that we are a part of. And a little spoiler, one of the people that we are going to be interviewing soon will be another member of that network. So mm. look forward to that. Um, and also the VCU Illustration Project. There's a link to that as well. Um, we need more. Come on, guys. We have like 90 illustrations that we need, and we have like uh -oh. <laughs> four or five or six or something oh, like Lord. that. So I really want this story to, to be illustrated. So if you can paint, if you can draw, if you can do digital art, if you can sculpt something, if you want to build a set with stick Legos. Stick figures. St stick figures, like uh, popsicle sticks. <laughs> Come on. Like, like make something. Send us an email uh, to our fan email. and um, Or send, if you're in the Discord, just send it to me in the Discord. Uh, direct message me there. Um, but... We got a lot, to, a lot to still add to that, and I really want to do that. So anyone can draw. If you can draw, just send it in. We would love to see it. Um, Puzzler just wrote, I will draw more. So there you go. Yep, yep. Shout out to Puzzler for the amazing art yes. on my yeah. cover there. <laughs> yeah, that's the first one that we got was from Puzzler. And if you are great. watching on Twitch, you can see it. Yes, so Sneak that's peak. very, very well done. Uh Digital art, I'm assuming. Like, I don't know. I guess it's, she probably did it on like a iPad or some something like that. But it's very, very well done. Um, but yes. So, anything else, Lucy? Before we let you go for the night. Um. Thanks for having me on here. It's been really fun. Awesome. Although I won't be around to help tell you about the chat now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Maybe awesome. one day Jeremiah will buy an extension cord or something. Maybe then I'll have my monitor set up. But all right. Well, you have been listening to an interview tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. I'm Lucy. And may the force be with you. Always. Always.